But I've seen so many people spend time praying. I'm not saying you don't pray. They spend time praying. They spend time fasting and they realize that they're not making any progress. One week go by, two weeks, one year, two years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30, 40. There are people that have been waiting for 10, 20, 30, 40 years and it seems like nothing has changed in their lives. Now I understand that demonic attacks come, right? But when you are out of alignment, you can feel it. Something is just not right. Something just doesn't feel right here. What do I need to do to get back on track? What do I need to do to get off this, this feeling that I just feel something? I don't know what it is, but I know that something is not right. Hey, what's going on? Matthew Taming here. I am so excited that you're joining me today for another exciting show. You know, today I want to talk to you about something that has completely changed my life. As a matter of fact, if there's one thing that I would I could say to you that completely changed my life, literally, figuratively, spiritually, psychologically, I mean, you name it. It's this, you need to get in alignment with God's will and God's plan for your life. See, most people don't realize that when God made you, or matter of fact, even before God created you, God had a perfect will for your life. The reason why you're so frustrated, the reason why you're unhappy, the reason why it seems like things can never go right, in every area of your life, you'll find the challenges in. Listen, you need to get in alignment with God's will for your life. And I'm going to show you here what that means, the benefits of alignment, the challenges, or the disadvantages of when you're not aligned, and how to get aligned. So make sure that you have a pen, a paper, an iPad, a tablet, or something that you can be able to you know, take notes with. Um, because I guarantee you, at the end of this message, you're going to look back at your life and you're going to realize that a lot of the things that has been said today, you need to make some major adjustments. So you can, the, the scripture for today is Proverbs 19, 21, and it says this based on the version that you're reading. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's way that prevail. In other words, you have your own plans. You have your own agenda. You have things that you want to do. But let me just highlight a few things that we're going to talk about today about alignment. Your destiny is connected to your ability to align. Let me say that again. Your destiny is connected to your ability to align yourself with God's will. The reason why sometimes people are not happy and frustrated because they're not in alignment with God's will for their lives. Your alignment must be seasonal and it's not a one time and done deal. Let me say that again. Your alignment is seasonal. In other words, you're going to find out that as you go through life, you're going to go through different phases. You're going to go through different challenges, different obstacles, different things that come up. You have to understand that based on the season of your life, you have to make the necessary alignment for that season. Because the alignment that works for one season may not work for another season. There's certain things that you're going to be doing in one season that you may not need to do those things during that season. And that's something that's very important for you to understand. Your alignment requires obedience, faith, and divine connections. Your alignment, again, it requires obedience it requires faith and it requires connection. There are people that God is going to connect you with based on your alignment. And then finally, your alignment comes with conviction or peace. You know, see, when God wants to align you, he will give you conviction or peace. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that later on. The thing is, a lot of people make excuses for our convictions and ignore the peace. 
We make all type of excuses for our convictions and we ignore that peace. Now, let me give you six benefits of alignment. Okay, six things that will benefit you when you are in alignment with God's will for your destiny. When you're in divine alignment, these are the, you know, five benefits. The first benefit is this. You're going to have peace and order in your life. Now, what do I mean by that? The bottom line is this. You're going to face challenges. You are going to face all types of storms. But when you get aligned with God's perfect will for you, no matter what storm that comes, you're going to have an inner peace that you can't even explain it. I know you're going to go through a lot of things. You're probably watching and saying, Matthew, I'm going through so much right now. How can I deal with this? The pressure is so much. The one thing that God is going to give you when you are in alignment is he's going to give you peace and he's, bring, he's going to bring order. Now, the reason why there's this order in your life, because God, in order for God to align things, he got to shift some things. And sometimes God have to remove certain people from your life for a season. Sometimes it's permanent thing, right? Because alignment requires force. You know, when I was, I started driving, I was about 17 and, and I bought my car, uh, my first car. I didn't know much about cars. I remember going into uh, driving one time and I noticed that my car was, was shaking and I didn't understand why. So I took the car to the mechanic and I said, listen, my car is shaking. What's going on? Why is this happening? The mechanic said to me that your car needs to be aligned. Your car, because you don't have any st stability. When you're not aligned, there's no stability. So first, you get the peace and you get the order. The next bend, the next thing that alignment does is it brings clarification and direction. If you're trying to figure out where to go, what to do, you don't know who. Listen, the moment that you get in alignment with God's agenda, he is going to bring so much clarity and he is going to bring so much direction. Alignment brings clarity and it brings direction. You're going all over the place because you're not aligned to what God has for you. You're going all over the place because you're not in the in the direction that God wants you to go. You're doing things that you want to do. Alignment brings conviction and positive change. When you get in God's alignment zone, as I call it, he is going to convict you about things that you need to change for the better. You start to get more uncomfortable around certain things, around certain people, around certain situations, because that conviction is it's not going to give you any rest at all. Alignment brings elevation and progress. If your life is stagnant, it seems like nothing is moving. You are trying, you're doing everything that you can do, but nothing is moving. Alignment is going to bring progress. Alignment is going to bring elevation. Alignment is going to bring open doors for you. Number five, alignment brings the perfect will of God. See, when you align with God, you are in the best place in the world. I don't care what is going on in your life. When you get aligned with God's perfect will, that's the best and the safest place to be. Now, let's go with some disadvantages of, being, of misalignment. One of the first things you're going to realize that when you are disaligned, it comes with confusion in your life. It comes with confusion. Are you confused right now? That is not of God because God is not the author of confusion. He is not. So if there's a lot of confusion going on in your life, you don't know what to do, where to go, how nothing makes sense. You're frustrated. You're confused. You, you, you're lost because you are out of alignment. The next thing is this misalignment brings you're an accident that's waiting to happen. You know, as I mentioned before, and I went to the mechanic, he said that your car has to be, has to be aligned. Now, imagine you're driving a car that is not aligned. 
You don't have control of the steering wheel. When you are driving a car that is not aligned and you're going fast, let's say 60 miles per hour, 70 miles per hour, you could imagine you're an accident that is waiting to happen. Anytime that you are, you're not aligned with God's will for your life, you are an accident that is waiting to happen. And the thing about it is you don't know what area that is going to cause the accident in your life. When you're in the highway, you're driving a car and you're going fast and you, your car's not aligned, it starts to shake. You cannot control or have full control of what direction the car goes because you're not, your car needs to get aligned. Another a disadvantage of misalignment is that you're open to demonic influences and attack. You can be easily, easily influenced by the demonic kingdom and attacked. Because when, you, when you're not alignment, you don't have the protection of God. Because you're going the direction that you want to go. You're doing the things that you think is best for you. So the enemy is going to say, okay, this person, they're out of alignment. This is what I need to do to get to them. You become so easily prone to demonic attacks. So your family get attacked, right? And you can't really seem to combat that. You can't really seem to get a hang of what's going on. You can't seem to get things under control. Misalignment also brings delay and frustration. My goodness. I've spoken to so many people. They are experiencing so much delay in their lives. And things that they, they should have been so much farther along. But because of the delay and the frustration in their lives... They can't make any progress. They can't go anywhere. So if you listen to this and go, wow, man, this, this just sounds like me. Misalignment also brings, it closes doors and opportunities for you. There are certain doors that will not open. There are certain opportunities that will not open because you're not in God's alignment for you. You're doing what you want, whatever strength that it takes for you to get a job, for example, and get your life moving. When you are outside the will of God, you're going to have to work three times as hard to maintain that. And guess what? After a while, you get burnt out. After a while, you cannot keep up with that pace because you're doing everything in your own power. You're doing things in your own strength. And after a while, being human, you can't go anymore. And then, of course, you're outside the will of God. You are outside the will of God when you are not in alignment. And that is the worst place that you want to be. Because then God is not obligated to do anything for you when you don't ask for things that is in alignment with his will. You can pray, you can fast, you can do all those things. Now those things are good, but I've seen so many people spend time praying. I'm not saying you don't pray. They spend time praying, they spend time fasting, and they realize that they're not making any progress. One week go by, two weeks, one year, two years, five years, ten years, twenty years, thirty, forty. There are people that have been waiting for ten, twenty, thirty, forty years, and it seems like nothing has changed in their lives. Now I understand that demonic attacks come, right? But when you are out of alignment, you can feel it. Something is just not right. Something just doesn't feel right here. What do I need to do to get back on track? What do I need to do to get off this, this feeling that I just feel something? I don't know what it is, but I know that something is not right. Have you ever had that feeling? Right? You just know your life, this is not what you envision. This is not what you hope for. And this is not what you want for yourself and your family. So you, you realize that something has to be done. Something has to be done. When you are outside of God's will, man, it's painful. You are so easily attacked. When you are outside of God's alignment zone, he is not obligated to do anything for you. No matter how much you pray, how much you cry, how loud you cry, and how loud you pray. He's not obligated to do anything for you.
There are seven things you must do if you want to get in alignment with God's divine will for your life. I don't care what is going on in your life right now, but if you would just listen to what I am telling you, what I'm going to share with you, this is guaranteed to work 100%. Listen to me. I'm not trying to hype you up. I'm not going to come in just to tell you things that don't work. Before I share things like this with anyone, I want to make sure that in my own personal life that I am able to replicate it over and over and over and over again. And I have been able to use what I'm going to share with you here to replicate, get in alignment with God's word for my life time and time again in different areas, different situations, different scenarios. I don't care what you're going through in life right now. If you want to experience God's divine and perfect will for your life, you have to be obedient. Listen, the reason why you're not experiencing God's word for you is that God is sitting back. Listen, listen. He wants to do so many great things for you, but God would not force himself on you. So he got to sit back sometimes because you're saying, Lord, I got this. I can do this. I don't need your help. But you're saying how? Your actions speak louder than your words. You're doing things that you want to do. You're pursuing your dreams. Your goal. There's nothing wrong with that. But a lot of times our dreams, our goals, our passionate things that we want, it's not what God always wanted for us. The reason why you're not succeeding is because you are not in alignment. And I want to show you how to get aligned with God's will for your life. So listen and pay close attention. Again, write these down. These are seven ways or seven things that you must do to get aligned with God's perfect will for your destiny. If not, you're going to realize that you repeat that, that same progression of frustration in your life. You repeat that same pattern that your mother's gone through, your father, your grandfather, your great, 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 because they've been repeating the same thing over and over and over. But you have the ability to break that cycle. You have the ability to break that cycle and bring about a change that will change, your, change you and change your family for a very long time. So seven things, how to get aligned with your destiny. Your destiny is calling you. Your destiny is waiting for you. your destiny. It's not somewhere so far. It is within you, but it is calling for you to come. The reason why you, you're not in that place yet is because you are not in alignment with God's perfect will for you. And I want to show you how to get in alignment. So let's go. The first thing that you must do to get in alignment with God's will for you, to your destiny, you have to desire God's perfect will for your life. You have to desire it. You have to desire it. You have to desire it. The reason why people get out of alignment is they don't desire God's will for their lives at all. They want to do what they want. They want to pursue their will. Let my will be done, not God's will. They want to go the direction that they feel is best for them. God is saying, okay, you got this right. You don't need my help. So I'm going to back off and let you do you until you get in a position that you've messed up your life. You're broken. Nothing is working. Then you're going to have some sense come into you to realize that in order for you to get to your divine destiny, you need to submit your will to God's will. I got to a place in my life when I said, Lord, I'm looking at my life. And I got to make some changes, man. I got to make some major, major changes. But before I made those changes, I said, God, I give you my will. I desire your will. I need your will. I am so desperate for your will to happen in my life. I need your will, Lord, because my will has done nothing but cause problems. My will has done nothing but cause confusion. My will has done nothing but cause unnecessary pain to me and to other people. That is the place that you are right now. You can change that. 
Your will would do nothing but cause problems, confusion, frustration, stagnation, aggravation, pain, depression. Your will would do nothing to advance your life if it's not submitted to God. You got to desire it. Oh, I hope that you desire the will of God for you. It is a beautiful thing. It is the most safest place that you can ever go. It is in the will of God. When you get in the will of God, you know that something is different. When you get in the will of God, oh, I'm telling you, I am telling you, desire the will of God for your life, for your family. I got a family and I desire the will of God for my kids. I desire the will of God. I seek after the will of God. You got to desire. You got to seek after God's will. You have to be intentional. Even professional athletes. Anytime that they want to get to that next level. You know what they do? They coach always tell them this. You got to want it. Like how bad do you want it? Most of us don't want it enough. Most of us don't really care until we find ourselves in situations that we cannot get out of. Then we desire for God to step in. Now, there's a place for that, but you don't have to get there. So first, you want to desire and pursue God's will for your life. So how do you do that? Right. You just start with a simple prayer. Lord. Let your will be done. I desire your will as simple as that. You don't have to go through a long list of things and no, just start with that. Number two, separate and obey the voice of God. If you want to align with your destiny, you have to go through a period of separation and obedience. Now, this can be a, a challenging time for, for a lot of people. I know that for me, but it's something that you have you, you, you eventually adjust to it. It should get through different seasons and you realize the patterns of God in your life. You learn to adjust. But you have to separate yourself and be obedient to the voice of God. There's some of you right now that are watching this. And God is already speaking to you. Already talking to you. You know exactly what that means for you. Sometimes that separation means you need to cut off certain people from your phone. You got to go through your phone, your phone, your contact and delete and wipe out certain people or just block them or just get rid of them. Sometimes it means that you have to return back home. There's some of you, you've gone to places that you have no business being in. And God is saying it is time for you to go back home. It is time to go back home. There's some of you. You're in jobs that you should not be in. You're in places that you should not be in. God is saying, I need to separate you in order to get you to where I need you to be. So you have to be separated. You can never influence the crowd that you're part of. Let me repeat that again. You can never influence a crowd that you're part of. What does that mean? You're part of a crowd. Everyone is doing the same thing. They're listening to the same music. It's the same flow. And you become so attached to that crowd that you do what they do. You say what they say. How could you expect for God to lead you somewhere if you're going with the crowd? Everything that the crowd does, you do it. Not going to happen. Number three, you need to have, you need to be committed and be consistent. You need commitment and consistency. You have to say, you know what? I need to make this change. So first, you desire and you pursue the will of God. Second, you allow God to separate you. And third, you commit and you become consistent. That means you commit to a certain time of prayer. I'm going to go over that in, in, you know, in a minute. You commit to a certain time of reading your Bible. You commit to a certain time of being alone. You commit to a certain time of just spending time with your family. You commit to getting away from certain things and certain people. And you have to be consistent because you can be committed without being consistent. You can commit to something. Maybe you do it once every two months, once every three months, once every few months. Con commitment and consistency is the key. 
you have to commit that. Listen, I want change in my life and I have to make some adjustments, whatever adjustments that you make, commit to it. Whatever adjustments that you feel you need to make, make those adjustments and then commit to it. For me, I have my phone, have uh, my alarm that I set for different times that I, I pray. And I make sure that before that time approaches, that I am in a place where I can focus on God. So you have to commit and you have to be consistent. Number four, you have to clean your bloodline. Listen, this is key. Your bloodline, your ancestral line from your great, 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 great grandparents have so many things in there that you have no clue about. You don't even understand what's going on until you begin to look into your bloodline. Now, this in itself is a completely whole topic that I will address later on. But until you cleanse your bloodline, you're going to repeat the same pattern because there's certain agreements that your ancestors made on your behalf that you have no clue about. You wasn't even part of that. But because you came from certain bloodlines, it will follow you. It will follow your children's children for generations to come. You have to clean and cleanse your bloodline. Again, that is so power packed that I would have to break that down in details. But you need your bloodline cleansed. Once that's cleansed, because the devil have legal rights, he knows what your great, great, great grandfather struggled with. So he's going to come after you with those things. Number five, your prayer time. OK, set some prayer time. Let me give you this. Start off with just 30 minutes a day, 30 minutes. The first five minutes, you just worship. You play music. You just say, oh, Lord, I bless you, Lord. I magnify you. Just exalt the name of the Lord. You just thank him. You praise him. You're not asking for anything. You're not praying for anyone. You just inviting the Holy Spirit to come in. Then the next, take the next 10 minutes to speak in tongues. If you have the gift of speaking in tongues, the evidence of speaking, I mean, the, the if you've been baptized the Holy Spirit with Adam speaking in tongues, you just spend the next 10 minutes. You spent that time because you're building your spirit up. Then you want to spend five minutes for your petition. And this five minutes, this is when you bring things to God. You talk about God about what's going on, your family, your life, and spend more time praying for other people than yourself. We have this tendency to be so selfish. We want to pray for ourselves so much pray for your family 90 percent of my prayer is for my, my kids my family spend time praying for your family and then the last five minutes you take that time to be silent so you can listen to god speak to you listen to god speak to you number six connect with a bible believing church that believes in prayer that believes in the, in, in the you know gifts of the spirit connect with them because when you connect with them let me tell you something. They are going to help to build you up. You need to connect with the church, a ministry that will help empower you, that you can learn from, that you can grow with, that you can get to that next level. Find one, pray for one. God is going to lead you to one or send one to you. Either way, when you do that, he will get you to it. And number seven, make daily decrees and declarations over your life. Now, I got a book that I'm going to share with you later on. I'm um, in another session, but you have to make daily decrees over your life. You have to make daily declarations, declare things. Don't accept what's going on in your life. If you see something negative happening, speak the opposite. If your marriage is destroyed, speak that it's restored. If your kids are acting out, speak that there's order. Speak order, speak positive. Don't let your words uh, destroy your life. Speak the things that you desire for God to do in your life. And I guarantee you, God is going to do it. God is waiting for you to get in alignment with them. God is waiting for you to just say, Lord, I need you. I need you. I need your alignment. I need your alignment. I need your alignment. I need to get aligned with you. God has so much for you. So much more than you would ever know. The Bible said that I has not seen nor ears heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man what God has in store for those who love him. Maybe you're going through a rough time in your life right now. I can guarantee you something. When you align yourself with God's will, 
for your life. You're going to notice change. Some of you are going to notice immediate change. Some of you are going to see changes within 24 hours. And my prayer for you is that you're going to experience sudden change in whatever that you're facing. Now, I want to pray for you and pray with you. I want to combine my faith. Maybe you find yourself in such a broken state that you can't even, you're like, man, Matthew, I can't even pray for myself anymore. I can't even pray anymore. I don't have the energy. I don't have the strength. I don't know even what to say. We can solve that right now. But before I do, I just want to recap again the seven ways that you can get aligned with God's will for your life. The first one is you have to desire and pursue God's perfect will, not your will. You're in this predicament because you've been pursuing your own will. Number two, allow God to separate you and be obedient to that voice. When God wants to do something in your life, he is going to separate you. And this means there are times when certain individuals may have to be removed from your life for a season. Not always permanent because God needs to get your attention. He needs to get you focused to a certain point. Number three, you have to be committed and be consistent. Be committed to change. Be committed to prayer and to fasting and to seeking the Lord and be consistent with it. Don't pray or fast once every six months or once a year. That's not going to get it. Number four, you have to clean or cleanse your bloodline. You have to pray and ask the Lord to reveal to you what is it in your family. You probably already know because every family has something in their bloodline that is causing things not to move. There's certain agreements that were made by the kingdom of darkness that you had no clue about that is causing the stagnation in your life. Number five, your prayer times. Let me go through the prayer times again. Just start up with 30 minutes. You don't have to do one hour a day. You don't have to do three or four hours a day. You, you, you can work your way up to that. Now, I've done the 24-hour prayer. I've done it several times. I've done the four, five, six-hour prayer, but you don't always have to do that. It, it takes time to get there. So what you want to do is start up with 30 minutes. The third minute you break it down like this. If you have to set an alarm clock, okay, to check, okay, five minutes in the beginning, that's fine. Set the alarm clock for five minutes and then go to 10 minutes until you get that 30 minutes. You're going to realize that after a while, you won't need that clock anymore. You're just going to be able to flow with it. So first five minutes, you spend that time in worship. You praise the Lord. You just thank him. You're not asking for anything. You just, oh, thank you, Lord. I bless you. I magnify you. You're so amazing. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. I invite your presence. After that first five minutes, the next 10 minutes you spend that time if you're speaking tongues you, you know if you if you feel the holy ghost with the evidence speaking in tongues hey get it it be go da da ba ka get it it be go sa you speaking tongues because that is cleansing you that is building you up that is creating the atmosphere for angelic activities to happen in your life you get strengthened and you're activating something in the spirit realm the next five minutes after that, this is when you do your petitions, your requests, you pray for other things, you pray for what's going on in your life, the frustration, the stagnation, whatever it is that you want to pray for. And I challenge people that I need you to pray more for other people than yourself. Because too oftentimes we are so caught up in our own trials and drama that we forget everybody else. That is not, that's not the way to do it. Spend time, for me, I spend more time praying, particularly for my family, because I'm the priest, of, I'm the king and the priest of my home. So it is my responsibility every day. A day doesn't go by that I don't pray for my family and lift them up. And next, you want to connect with a Bible-believing, Holy Ghost-filled church. When you connect with them, this is where you can get to build up other believers. They can build you up. They can encourage you. They can motivate you. And then finally, you want to make daily decrees. These are words that you speak, not in your thoughts, not in your mind, but you speak these words out so that so that the, the, the enemy can hear you and know that you mean business. So let me pray with you. Oh, God loves you so much. And I, I desire nothing but the best for you. I desire that you will live a fulfilling life that will shock the world. I want to pray with you. I want to join my faith with your faith. And I believe that God will begin to move. 
if you would just follow those things that I listed, I guarantee you things will shift because God is waiting for you to make a move. So let's pray right now. I want you to touch and agree that things must change. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just pray over your son, your daughter right now. God, that first, they would desire your will for their lives more than anything else. They would desire it and pursue it. And Lord, I pray that you're going to help them to understand their season have changed. That you want them to be in perfect alignment with your plan for their lives. That you are doing something great. Right now, Father, I pray that you're going to move them and put them in a position that only you can do it. I pray right now that whatever person, whatever situation that is trying to get them outside of your alignment, God, that if you have to remove that person for a season or permanently, that you will move, remove that person, God, that you will make some adjustments in their lives and they will allow you to, to get you to, to get them to where you need them to be. Father, I pray right now, God, that every obstacle that is facing them, Lord, they will submit it to you and they will submit their will to your will and they will stop fighting. No weapon that is formed against them shall prosper. I pray that you open up the eyes of their bloodline, the sins of their forefathers, God, they, so that they can repent and get cleansed so that any legal right that the enemy has will be revoked immediately. Father, I pray that you would just cleanse their bloodline, that you will lead them, Lord, that they will allow you, they will allow you and give you full authority over their lives because it is only in you that they can find alignment. It is only in you that they can find the peace that they're so desperate looking for. I decree and declare all these things in Jesus' name. I know that God has already done it. In the next 24 hours, I can promise you things are going to shift people that you haven't heard from for a long time certain situations that can work worked out you're going to notice some adjustment you're going to notice some adjustment and sometimes this adjustment come with attacks from the enemy because the enemy is fighting you he's fighting he don't want you to be aligned with god's will but i'm praying for you and i believe that god will send the right people your way to help you in this battle because again, alignment is not something you do once. Alignment has to be done every season. Every season. I align myself daily. I said, Lord, whatever I missed this morning, I hope I get it this afternoon. At nighttime, if I go to bed, whatever I miss in the afternoon, I get it. I hope I get it now. So be encouraged. You have a bright future. There are so many great things that God has in store just for you stop trying to solve the problems yourself leave it to God get aligned with him he would deal with those problems for you the reason to see you're fighting spiritual battle with physical weapon and you will never ever win as long as you continue to fight spiritual battles with physical weapon you will never win the Lord's got this for you. Get a line. And I guarantee you, get a line. Watch God work. Get a line and watch my God do miracles in your life. I'm praying for you. I'm here for you. I love you. I want nothing but the best for you. God bless you.